Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another viewer request video. One in which I intend on inflicting my lovely drawing skills upon you. Not simply to torture you, but to try and explain how drillless overflows work. They all work on the same principles. If you go and search for it on YouTube, or you go and buy one, it's all the same thing. Most of the YouTube ones uh, involve plumbing bits that you can buy from a hardware store, and the beauty for those is you don't really require any special tools. But I'm not going to build one of those. <laughs> Partially because they've been done to death and uh, you can just search for it and get one of those. And the other reason, of course, is uh, I think it's kind of expected of me now to make something either out of acrylic or something that's a little more complicated. Uh, in this case, it's not really going to be complicated, but it, it will be made out of acrylic. Now, no matter where you get it from or uh, what you make it out of, they all work on the exact same principles. And I'm going to try and explain that here. First off, there's a reservoir inside the tank, there's a reservoir outside the tank, and they are connected by some sort of tube, uh, usually U-shaped. And that tube obviously has, is filled with water, and this is how it works. You add water into the aquarium. Now that usually comes from a sump, uh, it doesn't have to, it could be any other form of whatever, some sort of filter external to the tank. As the water is poured into the tank, it overflows into the first reservoir, travels through the U-tube into the second reservoir and as that fills up it drains down the standpipe and that is it. That's how they all work. Whether you buy one, make one, or whatever there is no difference between them. The hard parts about making them is regulation of flow and what I mean by that is that tube can only handle a certain amount of flow and of course the box on the inside of the tank can only handle again a certain amount of flow depending on how you do the grating and stuff and regulating that part is a bit more difficult than just like when you dr drill in an aquarium. That actually isn't the main reason why I tend not to use them very much. I mean I have a couple of times in uh, the past for uh, special circumstances but most of the work I do is for clients that, and it's uh, for display purposes. And for me, it is just one more thing inside the aquarium that I need to disguise, minimize, or in some way just make it less obtrusive so that it doesn't take away from the look of the aquarium. And it's much simpler for me just to drill the tank. And, and that's the main reason. Now, if you're wondering what I'm doing here, believe it or not, this is going to be the connector between the two reservoirs, the inside and the outside. It'll become quite obvious in a few minutes. The hard part about this is not only must this be watertight, it actually has to also be airtight. Uh, especially if you're working on uh, lower flow rates, because uh, water has a substantial weight to it and it can cause a bit of draw through any kind of small crack or uh, gap or whatever in these joints to draw water, or sorry, draw air in through and therefore create uh, an air blockage. And if that gets big enough, uh, you could have issues with overflows and <laughs> uh, that's something you really, really want to avoid. So it is a bit of a hard, harder glue up, and because of the tiny spot uh, space on the inside, I left a little bit of a lip on the outside that you can see there, and that is so that I can glue it from the outside when I uh, flip them over. So, took this over to the saw, did two 45 degree cuts, and there you go. We have the U-connector between the two reservoirs. You don't really need to make them... Uh, as equal as that. It uh, doesn't really matter to tell you the truth, uh, but it is important to get them at uh, as close to 45 as possible simply because uh, it makes it easier to make them uh, airtight and watertight. And after saying that, uh, I drilled a quarter inch hole in this. Yes, I did. And that is so I can attach a piece of airline tubing. And uh, that is how I prefer to remove the air from the. So you need to obviously create a uh, flow, which means you have to remove the air. And I find it simpler to do this than to run a try and run a piece of airline tubing or, or some sort of tubing up all the way through the, one of the arms and into the inside uh, and then suck all the air out. 
I find it also a lot simpler when it comes time for cleaning. Uh, if you need to restart this or take it apart and move it or whatever, it, it's just much simpler. And when you see, uh, when I hook this up for operation, you'll see how much simpler it is and how quick it is. And it's, uh, I find that kind of important. The downside of this particular way of doing this is this is actually a really difficult glue up. It's really hard to get into all those nooks and crannies and make sure that uh, they're all glued nice and tight. It was uh, it didn't take actually that long, uh, but it's not something I recommend if you haven't done it at least a few times. Uh, and it's actually a couple spots where I uh, <laughs> ended up putting too much glue because I I was more uh, concerned with function than I was with uh, the form of it all, and uh, I did have a couple spots where it did run. But, again, like I said, it's uh, <laughs> not something you want to do if you're uh, just starting out on, on gluing, because it's, uh, it's, it is a bit of a tough one. So there we go. We got it all glued up. Next thing I need to do is uh, build the two boxes. I'm just going to do that off uh, camera, because <laughs> it's just two boxes. And then we'll get into the process of getting this to work. So here are the two boxes. Uh, <laughs> the one with the hole is obviously the one on the outside of the tank. And that's where the stamp pipe's going to go. The other one's going to be on the inside. And there are a couple things I need to do to it first before <laughs> we can hook this all up and run it. Uh, mostly I need to put uh, some grating on this so that uh, when the water overflows into it, it doesn't, uh, you know, suck out fish and stuff. And the easiest way of doing that is to hook it up to the milling machine and, uh, well, put the notches in it. The nice thing about the milling machine is uh, it will give me exactly <laughs> the right amount of spacing and uh, I can gradually work my way down and get uh, like a nice perfect pattern. You don't need to use a milling machine obviously, <laughs> you can do this on a table saw. Uh, the only difference it would be on uh, a table saw you'll end up with a curve to the holes, like even if you uh, extend the saw blade all the way up to the top, it is still a round item and it will end up uh, giving you, like I said, a little bit of curve on the bottom. Whereas this gives you nice square holes, and you can decide, uh, depending on which side of uh, end mill you use, you can end up with, uh, you know, these are 1 8 uh, I also have quarter inch, uh, 3 8 <laughs> You can make them any size you want. And that, of course, is important when you want to regulate how much water is going to go through this. I'm hooking this one up for fairly low flow rate. I'm just going to use that small pump I've been using a lot for a lot of builds. Uh, so I don't really need that much. Uh, but if you want a lot more flow, you're obviously going to need either a lot more uh, gratings or uh, wider gratings or much deeper ones. So there we go. It's all uh, finished now. So I need to brush this off. And the other thing I need to do before we can run this is I need to uh, make brackets that are adjustable. The inside box needs to be adjustable for height. You need to be able to move it up and down so that you can not just regulate the flow, uh, but also regulate what uh, water level you want. And to do that, <laughs> I'm gonna use the milling machine again, simply because I haven't really shown it and used that much. Uh, it's just very simple for uh, carving this kind of groove. Now I probably should have done this out of a quarter inch, uh, but I used a three, inch, uh, three eighths inch end mill uh, just so I have a bit of play in it because I just didn't really want to go back and uh, have to remake these. So this is going to give me, well, about two inches of uh, free play. So it gives me f a fair amount of give. Now normally what I would do for this as well is I would machine uh, the bolts for it. Uh, but I was running a little short on time, so I'm just going to use uh, quarter inch uh, stainless steel bolts. Uh, it's going to look a little tacky, I suppose. Um, but like I said, I didn't have the time to go and uh, make them. So there you go. There's the slot. I'll make one more of these, and then we'll cut those shorter, and we end up with two brackets. And there you go. That's pretty much how it works. These will be attached to the box on the inside like that. Uh, and those are the, <laughs> the bolts. And I'll just tighten that down by hand for the moment. And this allows me to slide that up or down depending upon uh, where I want that all to be. Uh, it doesn't really actually require, uh, like I said, because this is going to be for fairly low flow rate, uh, it doesn't really require too much adjusting, uh, but it is important to have it adjustable. So just to kind of eyeball it here, what I've done is I'm going to just place this on a couple of, uh, <laughs> those are parallels I use for the middle, 
uh, just to give me an idea of roughly where I want it to go. Then it's just a simple matter of uh, gluing that to the L bracket, which is on the outside box. Uh, that's the one that uh, hangs on the lip of the tank. And uh, we're pretty much ready to fire the sucker up. So this is uh, going to slide right in here. And because there's a hole in it, <laughs> the water goes out quite nicely. Now you don't need as long an air tubing on uh, um, this as uh, I'm using here. You can just need a short little one. And then you can either tie a knot in it, or what I prefer to do is set it inside of the outside box and therefore you can just if you get a little bit of air in it you can easily just take it out uh, whenever you want. And the other thing I forgot to mention is uh, I actually glued that piece of quarter inch onto there. And not really that important. But I'm going to plug the pump in here. It's just that same little pump I've been using. And there you go. And that's going to fill up the inside tank. And then that's going to overflow into the inside reservoir, go through the YouTube. Uh, fill up the outside reservoir and then overflow down the standpipe and I just have it hooked up to a bucket down below and there you go that is uh, drillless overflow you can see how uh, nice and neatly the uh, water flows through that so anyway this is getting close to the end of the video if you like this style of video please like and or subscribe and <laughs> let me know what you think of this build I think it was kind of uh, kind of a cute one um, like I said, it doesn't need to be this complicated, of course. Uh, it's mostly just uh, difficult gluing more than anything else, uh, but it works. Uh, and again, like I said before, if you want more flow rate, uh, there's a lot of things that need to be adjusted to make it uh, work better. I think the YouTube is pretty substantial for more flow rate, but some of the other things um, may need to be adjusted, like the, the slots for the grading there uh, would need to be wider or deeper, that sort of stuff. So there's the bucket. That shows you how much flow is going through this now. But anyway, thanks again for watching. Uh, I will see you in the next video. And uh, bye for now.